Atheist, are you lying to yourself? I want to speak to the atheist. Are you lying to yourself? Are you trying to tell yourself that you being in a very small minority of the population, being in a very small minority in history, are you telling me that you're going to say that everyone else has the everyone else is suffering from a delusion everyone else is you know they're tripping are you gonna say that or are you gonna say that you're waking other people up in this small minority group or are you gonna say oh is it or the latter that you're wasting your time and fooling yourself is it that are we all is everybody else the majority of people just bugging out or are you fooling yourself and living a lie i am super solican and this is the awakening i just want to pose this question here i'm not i'm never opposed to having an intellectual conversation or in a genuine one i'm not opposed to having a genuine conversation where a person is seeking answers to ask me why I do, you know, what I do or believe what I believe. I, that's not a problem. But see, when it comes to to atheism and things like that, like I can't really just it's the premise itself. You know, we should never. And, and that's why throughout history, like people haven't even entertained that. You know, you've had atheists here, you know, and, and atheism has been around. But people, for the most part, it's been in very small pockets of individuals who have shared this 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 mindset because for the most part it's the premise itself baffles people how could you sit here and look at creation look at something that's here that's created that's moving that has autonomy that's doing things and not go to and not find the conclusion come to the conclusion that there is a creator of that said thing anything you see if i look at the anything from when i look my to pan to my left i pan to my right everything in my house every single thing even this bible even the even this you know this computer this anything i have Every the DVD player, anything, this thing is made by someone, no matter where you look or no matter how you try to slice it or make up um, these fanciful theories or things like evolution, like which we know is a lie. Like we found we haven't found anything that links humans to come in for monkeys like those are animals. We're humans. They have there is no link. The Big Bang Theory is a bunch of nonsense. Kids can understand that nothing cannot create something. If the universe, we know the universe isn't eternal, it's collapsing on itself. So it had a beginning, it's going to have an end. The beginning of, the, of what we know as our reality and universe had to be sparked and started by something outside of our space and time. This is why modern science, scientists and scholars are, adopt, are adopting multiverses. You're hearing that now. You didn't hear anything about multiple uh, dimensions and, and universes and things like that before. And what, I, what do I mean is you didn't, like now they're talking about different di dimensions outside that we can't see that are operating with our own you wouldn't even hear that type of talk before that will be looked at as suedo science but the goalpost has to move because they know that people are waking up and you can't fool them by just telling them that you know everything just started just exploded into being by a bunch of gases and and then human beings just came just appeared out of some slop and some goop of nothing like that stuff, like you got to really suspend your reality to, to, to think, to believe that. So atheists, 
that's why you don't have many of them. And also another thing is just the human conscious and spirit. Everyone is like just why the Bible says that, you know, you have to um, come as a child to uh, and the kingdom of heaven is is inherited by the by children because child you have to have a childlike mindset. And, and that's me because children are they have they they have faith and they're ready to learn. They also have a purity where they not worried about they minds aren't manipulative just yet. You know, some they get like that, but they learn that stuff, I think, in the world. But they don't have everyone's born with that connection to the creator until as life goes on, it gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. But. We all know every since the beginning of time, there has been a sense of a con there has been a sense of longing for human from, from the human spirit for their creator. There has been a longing of the human spirit to be linked back with that higher source, to have a relationship with them. To this has been an ancient writing since the beginning of time, since the beginning of writings. There have been a spiritual connection of human beings, meaning that there's always been the knowledge of a creator. Do you understand? So when again, when atheists speak as like and when they speak to people, they and they always like to try to to bully Christians. That's just the that seems to be the running theme for people because they know how Christians are, are passive. Like Christians won't um they know that our gospel mandates that we are that we don't be uh, attack anyone or do anything like that. But they don't like they don't disrespect the Muslims. They don't disrespect Islam. You know, they don't go disrespect the Jewish community. You know, by telling talking about sky daddies and all this type of stupid stuff. You know? It's just, but that's just futile at the end of the day, because you know all that, all these jokes and stuff, man. All that's like, come on. It's like, are you serious? Like you, this is your mortal, this is your mortal life. First of all, you and you only have so long on this earth to to find the Lord and, and you know and get a relationship with Him before your time is up, and then you have to be judged. Then your soul is either going to be taken to heaven or, or thrown into the lower parts of the earth into hell. You know, you're either going to go to heaven or hell. It's the only destination for your for uh, your soul when you die because it's going to return to its creator and you will be judged. The thing is, is you don't you've totally squandered that and turned off that portion of your brain and of your existence and I, and you do yourself a huge disservice because now you're mi you so many things that you're missing now the premises you got like people who just operate on a totally uh scientific totally on a on a totally um indoctrinated uh um uh, on a indoctrination of a certain type of learning like say a uh, people who are in like say in the medical field, like if you get indoctrinated by taking the Hippocratic oath in the medical field, you're pretty much stifling yourself to not be able to think outside of the box. You know, while you got people over here who are medium spirit, uh, you know, naturalists, you got people over here who having many who getting attacked by demons, people exercising demons, like the whole spirit realm is out here. You don't even understand what's going on. You know. Um, you don't understand that it's healing, you know, from God that we have the children of God have a obli not an obligation, but we have authority. Once we've chosen, um, once we've been saved by God and by the Holy Spirit and, and we, we've found Jesus Christ to be our savior and we've accepted him into our hearts. Now, us as we have became sons and daughters of Christ, sons and daughters of the living God. Now we have authority to be able to go to the Father and ask for things, for healing, for things like that. You do. Once you're doing the once you're operating in the parameters of the Lord, you have the authority to ask and receive because he tells you that. It's not us just making it up. You have the authority. But if you don't, you know, that's the authority in the heavenly courts. Like there's court in heaven. You understand? There's th what's done in heaven is is unleashed on earth. But for people who have just squandered that part 
of their existence, they don't even understand those things. So they just operate carnally, totally on the corner. That's why a lot of doctors just, they just, they can't even give you a healing because they totally operate on one mindset. They don't think outside the box. They don't think about preventive care. They, if somebody recommend this drug, that's what's right. Take this drug, man. Take it. You know? And the atheists, why well, I say atheists, really, they do themselves a total disservice. They living in darkness and they call themselves trying to bring enlightenment to others. Like they troll Christian pages. You'll see atheists trolling Christian pages. But it's like, why do you what do you do that for? Because you want our attention, right? You want our you want Christians' attention. You know, because Christians don't go seeking you out. Now they can go Christians can't go to uh when they street preaching, you can atheists can be walking down the street, you know, hey, you know, just like anyone else. We don't know, like it's not like we know where atheists congregate. <laughs> like we don't know where they congregate. You have, you know, cuz atheists aren't the same as Satan worshipers or, you know, or agnostics. You know, agnostics are people who just you know, they at least smart enough and have a, enough sense to understand that there is a creator, but they just don't know anything about him. And you know what? That's fine. But if you ask, but if you're genuine, you would look into this phenomena that history is broken in half for. And you would actually look into that genuinely and do the due diligence to see if what these people, these Christians are risking their lives for, that, you know, that history is broken in half for, the the events that's happened throughout history, that, that's even happening today, people claiming, you know, miracles happening and healings in their life, having these spiritual experiences. You can go have, do the due diligence to go see if that phenomenon, that's real or that's just a phenomena. You can do that scientific experiment for yourself, you know, and, and no matter how you whatever semantics you come in with it, you know, God's not God's not tripping on that. You know, whether you coming at it is I just want to know if you but if you genuine, nothing that, that you come to God with will come back void. If you genuinely asking him for answers, he said you ask and you shall receive. You understand you will receive that understanding. But see. For some atheists and for just some people, see, some atheists, like you are a child of, of your father, the devil, you know, because atheism, again, is just you trying to push your belief system. That's it. You know nothing <laughs> like. But what you do know is that we're here talking, living and breathing and nothing cannot produce something. It never will happen it just does not. It it can't happen. You are in a you you are in an impossibility. That's an impossibility. You cannot like so when you start from an impossible premise and you live in by that people not like people don't really take you serious. Like and we know that you've been lied to by my media and by big daddy government and stuff like that. You still believe Neil Armstrong landed on the moon right then and there, you know, and that that wasn't taped and scripted. You believe that. You understand? But don't try to call Christians gullible and things like that for believing what they believe. They have more credence to believe that than you, than to believe than you just to believe that nothing produces something. They have more credibility for their belief since the beginning of human writing and understanding. There has been talks of the creator of God. You understand? God's been moving on this earth. There's traces of God. Like the Bible itself has predicted numerous things. Like if you really look at it and study it, there have been people who've studied the prophecies in the Bible. And there's no way that those things would just happen, that just come together by happenstance. Right now, the Euphrates River is drying up. The Bible predicted that. How would it know that in ancient times? The Bible is a powerful book. Like you keep, it's the book to keep giving. That it's the book to keep on giving. Every time I open it, every time you read it, you'll learn something new. You'll get something new. It'll speak to you. It'll speak something new to you, to your heart. You know, something for you to understand and and utilize to make it to the end of this race. So you know that we can um not only be completed 
through the Holy Spirit, we'll be completed in our personage and be the person that God wants us to be. And we'll also be um, blameless to God. So we'll be able. So God will look at us as sons and daughters and we'll be taken into heaven for eternal life. God not promising everybody eternal life and God not giving everybody eternal life. There was already a war in heaven of people being rebellious and people, you know, not want to be with God. So it's not going it ain't going to happen again. God wants people who in, in heaven who wants to be with him. You understand? And God's not obligated to take you there. So you have you have hell first, which is scheduled for Satan and his angels. You know, you will experience hell. And then the second death is the lake of fire. You'll be thrown into the lake of fire. There's nothing but fire all around. You know, eternal torture. You know, eternal anguish, as I should say. And that anguish is going to also come from, can you just imagine the anguish is going to first come from when you find out the truth about Christ, that you've been, that you turn your, some atheists come from being Christians. A lot of you are going to be people who God be like, you turn your back on me. You turn your back and that right there at the end of your life, like when you on your, a lot of when, when people on their deathbed and death is coming to meet you, you know, and then you start experiencing feeling them flames of hell while you, you know, when you in between sleep and things like that, you feeling the hot flames of hell, hearing the screams of people in hell, like they are screaming in, in agony and feeling them hot flames, man, you're not going to. You're going to rethink your whole life, but it's going to be too late. You understand? God's not accepting the, the, the wolf tickets. He knows the heart, you know, and at that time, God's going to be the one punishing you, you know, because it's at the end. You know, you squandered your whole life. You sit here, you come, you come on the Christian posts and stuff like that, where people are giving hope, saving people, other people alive. They're saving them alive, like just with myself. There was nothing else that could have saved me on this earth except God himself, except Jesus Christ. If I hadn't found Jesus Christ, I wouldn't even be talking to you right now. And there's other people like that who Christ has freed them from their addictions. They couldn't do it. No self-help programs could do it. They would have been dead on the streets. But Jesus Christ, somebody gave them Christ and saved them in their calamity, saved them alive. It was a person who was going to go rob a store, you know, going to go do this. You talking to him, talking about, ah, man, well, you know, just be a good old, good old boy. That ain't nobody listening to that. That was going over their head. But Jesus Christ, the spirit came to them and stopped them. The Holy Spirit is what convict. We just talking words. You know, I'm just giving you the truth. But the Holy Spirit is what comes through and convicts. But you have to have a you have to have a heart that's not a hardened heart of stone. You have to have a heart, a real heart. Like God sees the heart. And if that Holy Spirit come to you, if the Holy Spirit come and touch the heart and you listen, then you know you can become a, a son or daughter of, of Christ, man. You know, and you can get grafted into the family of God. You can be a child of God and you ain't gotta worry about all that stuff. You know, the 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 like and God will start giving you answers. I don't know why people think that when you become a Christian, you stop reading. Like you have actual theologians. Like people, the first colleges were created by Christians. You better you, you better put some respect on our name. Christians are very intelligent beings, man. You understand? The beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. You running around her in futility. Like you running around her like just like a little ant. And God, when he get tired, when he get ready, you know, and he and, and your foolishness, you get tired of your foolishness and it just get to you. You you on your hundred trolling comment of on, under uh, Christian pages, you know, God going to see you and then he just going to smack he going to, you know, he going to smack you and you're going to get, you know, and at the end of the day, man, don't try to pull on Christian heartstrings and try to make it seem like, oh, well, you want to see, you know, you, you, you Christians, you want to see us, uh, you want to see us in hell. You want to see us this. If we wanted to see you in hell, we wouldn't even be talking to you. You know, we would just take our the gem of our life, tuck it somewhere and go about our our fulfilled lives, having a relationship in the best time that we ever had. You know, say having speaking to the creator, you know, being in tune with everything that he got going on. And and then at the end of it, you know, attaining eternal life, like what, what, what will be the, you know, 
But no, we stop on our way to, to entertain people who try to insult us, you know, who try to, you know, uh, debate all day. Like, man, and that's the thing. I'm not, again, I'll, we can have intellectual conversations, but I am not debating a person who can formulate that nothing and who cannot answer me when I ask them, can nothing produce something? Well, nothing is technically, no, no, no. <laughs> you better go, you know, back years ago, you would have been in one of them institutes, man. I don't, we not playing games here. I'm not doing that, bro. I'm not finna, like, we, I have to move, like, we gotta move on people who trying to actually move. We have to, I have to speak with people actually trying to move forward. Like, I don't have time to waste. You understand? And even, like I said, even scholars today and scientists are realizing that the Big Bang, that theory is debunked. Like, that's done. Like, we have to move forward. Now, with atheists again, they'll tell you when, when you tell them about the living God, what they'll ask, give me some proof. Let me let me see some proof. First of all, Jesus Christ told you, man, that this wicked generation ain't gonna get no proof. That's what Christ said. You know, you had back, you know, in ancient times, God's spirit and stuff was on the earth. You know, you had the fallen beings, they had they create giants, you had a God, you know, um, causing the plagues of Egypt, you know, all type of part he part in the sea, stuff go all type of stuff going on. You know, all type of signs and wonders, the manna coming from heaven, you know, just they haven't the Israel, the the Hebrew Israelites find their food and and all this other, you know, just all this thing. God leading them from a pillar on the earth. He was leading them from a cloud. God was doing that. But see, now Jesus Christ came to earth. He came. God came to earth in an avatar, in a human avatar. And we shed his blood. And he rose again and went, you know, and now we have uh, the ability to he had to do that, of course, for the to reconcile us to himself again, because he was done with humanity. Humanity has sinned, you know, but he had he completed the mission himself. This is a significant event in history. History is broken in half. Of that. Just think about this. Just think. See, since people, since when you talk about it under the Christian terms, people try to have a Christian bias. So let's just talk about something you can understand. Movies. Just think, if the movie on the movie Prometheus, you saw those beings that, how they see the earth, okay? No one had no clue. The humans had no clue of that. They had zero clue, right? No, they had no clue. They didn't know. They weren't there with a camera recording that that being who came from the, and came down and seeded the whole earth. They didn't record that. So they found those writings and all that stuff. You saw the movie and they ended up going to, you know, the planet or whatever. Now, what if that same being decided to send his only son to come down or he put himself. Let's just say he was able to to or he came down. Let's just say that he came down to earth. Now, this is a being that's more immensely powerful than you. Like, God himself can't just come. Like, there will be no way that the creator God could come to earth. So, that's why Jesus Christ, he had to come into the avatar. He put himself into a human woman. Again, listen to me. How would the creator God just bring himself to earth? any other way you think so let's just but but let's stay along the lines of movies for you because i know you know we talking about atheists and maybe some atheists checking this this video out lord willing now you have the this being who like i said they seated that in the movie they seated the earth one of them came down so now if we were just in human in human existence that being was to come back, you know, those beings were to come back and his only son, the day king came and brought his only son to earth to tell human beings what happened, who seeded the earth, how he did it. And now they was coming to bring prosperity and enlightenment to the earth. And we killed him. How, first of all, would that be a sick? Will his coming to earth be a significant event for you? Yes, it would be. Like, no one would say that that wouldn't be a significant event. 
That would be that would be that history would break for that event. Like his the reason why we use BC before Christ and after death is because that was a huge significant event to judge time from. You got to have a huge a very significant event and you pick that to judge time from, you know, backwards and forwards. This is how that happened. So Again, don't act like that that wouldn't be a very significant event. You have people talking about, oh, well, the Bible wasn't written by men and, and all that. Everything is written by men and, and women and people. You know what I'm saying? They, it don't matter. Men at the time. Yes, men wrote the Bible down through inspiration from the Holy Spirit, which is not a man. Okay? That's that. Like... And to have all of those things corroborate and say the same thing and and come and bring us this this masterpiece, like I said, and this um, that God intended for us to have was is all incredible in, in itself. You know that all those things came together. And if you want to go, you know, get a if you don't believe in the King James Bible and all that, you like, oh, it's been touched on. And well, go get the Ethiopian Bible. They have them. You can go go get that and read it. Like, don't come in again. If you're a person who's under these comments and things like that, trying to debate with people and you don't have any knowledge, you've never read the Bible. You got to you, you got to go read it and come back to me. You cannot speak on something through just Internet talking points and hearsay. You can't tell me about it because you, you we having a disingenuous argument and conversation here. But atheists just they're in atheists are just in the dark. And they try and it's just another uh, coping mechanism, because if you really look at it, a lot of atheists have came from Christian background. Some of them have been hurt by people in the church or maybe the church, um, you know, uh, kick, you know, may have, they may have done something. A family may have done something in the church and the church kicked them out or excommunicated them or something. A lot of they may have come from a Catholic background, who you know, Catholics have a lot of things that Christians don't really, that we don't really um, entertain or don't consider to be part of, of being a Christian. Like, you worship, you know, the, the sacrilege, all this mer worshiping the Ar um, Mary and all of that stuff. We don't believe in all that, man. You know, Christians are not with all that. But you will have atheists usually come from a background like that or they, will, you know, um, had Christian parents who wouldn't allow them to do certain things. And all they had Christian parents and, and the fear of God was placed into them. What that did was they what that did was now that scared them. And they now have as a coping and pacification mechanism, coping mechanism. They tell themselves there is no God. There is no way that I'll be punished for my sins. There is no way that um that this creator God can what will do to me what um the bible says if i don't obey him there's no way because he don't even exist that's the only way that you can cope with that otherwise you will be going to you wouldn't even be able to function in your life you understand because you would know that you will be under the punishment and curses of god in your life like and you couldn't operate like that and i you know i understand that but what you need to do the solution is is you need to stop running from God and trying to fight against him. And you need to return to God and obey. You know, you need to do the due diligence and things that, that it takes so you can obey the Lord in the word. So with that being said, peace and blessings to the hearers and doers of the Lord's word. A special blessing and shout out to those who waited and listened, had patience, listened to the whole message to the end. I am Super Solican. This is The Awakening. I'm gone.